Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought I'd share with you my journey on how I came to stop procrastinating almost completely. My story with procrastination. When the subject of procrastination comes up, I think about how I was back when I was unhappy working at a corporate job. My procrastination was the worst back then. I mean, it was completely out of control. For those who don't know, several years back, I quit my traditional 9 to 5 job after realizing that corporate culture was just not for me. And then I went into a deep soul searching journey, but um, that's, that's for a different time, different video, so I won't get into it. Anyway, back when I still had a corporate job, my procrastination was at its peak. As soon as I ended work at 5, I'd come straight home, go right into my room, right to my bed, and turn on my computer to watch some mind-numbing TV series for the next 6 or 7 hours straight until it was time for me to go to bed. And you know, honestly, I would do that every single day over and over and over. I remember I spent a lot of time in bed, eating in bed, watching my TV series in bed, you know, whatever, just trying to shut the world out. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't depressed or anything. I mean, I was having a blast just watching my TV series and just being cooped up in my bed. But, you know, I just wanted to zone out. That was what I wanted to do. Mind you, I didn't just do this once in a while or when I just needed to relax or rest or whatever, but I did this every single day. Now, if you do the math, I was watching TV for seven hours a day. Now, five times seven is 35 hours a week. And that's almost a full-time job. Watching TV was essentially another full-time job for me. That's crazy. Okay, but, you know, I was hardworking, I had a full-time job, whatever. This might have been okay if I didn't have anything to do other than my job, right? But at the time, I had a lot of projects I was juggling. I mean, if I think back, I was really hustling back then. I had a full-time job, and on the side, I was running a weekly email writing course, I was also involved in a startup endeavor with my brother, and I was trying to set up a blog site with my writing and my drawings. By the way, I still have it up, so um, if you're curious, the link to the blog site is in the description below. So me coming home from work and zoning out, staring into my computer screen for seven hours a day was just not okay. You know, honestly, I couldn't help it. Back then, procrastination was basically a way of life for me. And I constantly felt guilty for it. I constantly felt like I was failing at everything. So it's not like I was having fun while I was watching this TV series only. No, I felt bad. I felt bad about myself. My self-esteem actually went down a lot, you know? And the more ironic thing is that the more I felt that way, the more I procrastinated. But I knew I had to stop. I mean, this was ridiculous. I told you, watching TV was almost another job. So I tried to stop. I tried. I really struggled to stop. But, you know, I just couldn't. I did everything. I remember I would write down all the tasks that I had to do, make a list, get a planner, write down stuff on your calendar, anything and everything, like put a timer on anything and everything. Just I tried everything, but it just <laughs> didn't work. I might be quote unquote good for a few days, maybe even a couple of weeks, but I just couldn't completely eradicate the habit no matter how hard I tried. So I got to start thinking about procrastination. I mean, I really started thinking about it, like in a deep way. As far back as I can remember, I've always procrastinated. And then it occurred to me, maybe if I figure out when I started procrastinating, I might be able to figure out how to stop completely. The answer might be in my childhood. My earliest memory of me procrastinating was probably in middle school, around sixth grade. That's because starting middle school 
we were forced to take learning more seriously. I mean, think about it. In elementary school, learning was all fun and games, and the grades you got didn't matter much. But as soon as you entered middle school, things got serious. Now, all of a sudden, the grades you got would matter. It's going to determine what kind of classes you can take, and those classes are going to influence the classes that you got to take in high school, and then that's going to matter what kind of college you go to, and et cetera, and et cetera. So, no more fun and games anymore. <laughs> and it was at around this age they started training us kids to become productive, to use our time optimally, and to meet deadlines. We were given hard deadlines to turn in our homework, projects, and essays, and etc. This concept of deadline, which is such a corporate way of thinking, is really pushed and trained into our young, very malleable minds at school. Hmm. Almost as if we're being molded to be good workers at corporations. Anyway. I think sixth grade is when I started this habit of procrastinating. I know we all did it, right? We know we should be reading those chapters assigned to us, but we just don't want to. So we delay what we don't want to do to the last minute. And that's also when I learned the consequence of procrastinating and missing the deadline. And the consequence is that I was labeled as a failure. Because, well, the teacher would literally give me a big fat zero, which then would be reflected on my overall grade. This then would make me feel awful about myself and lower my self esteem a bit. Because now people started judging me by the low grade that I got at school. You know, they would say things like, She only got a 70 on math? Maybe she's not so bright. You know? <laughs> I mean. Wow, that consequence was big. I should never have procrastinated. I mean, those are the thoughts that w a s going through my head. So, at school, we learn to meet deadlines and we learn to see ourselves as failures when we can't. And at the same time, we also develop a habit of procrastinating and feeling guilty for not wanting to do the task imposed on us. And like that, the vicious cycle is born. The more productive we were pushed to be, the more intensely we started to procrastinate. And this continued on into our adulthood. The more we try to hustle and be productive, the more we're going to have a problem with procrastination. Because that's what we've learned to do from such a young age. When I realized this, I finally realized why I was coming home and doing nothing when I had a million things that needed to get done. And it also made sense why my procrastination habit was at its worst when I was hustling several projects at the same time. I wasn't filling my day with anything I enjoyed, such as drawing and writing. In fact, that was the last thing on my list of 20 things I had to do. I think I figured that.、Um, I didn't deserve to do the thing that I enjoyed unless I finished my work first. And by work, I mean the stuff that actually makes money. Now that I think about it, that way of thinking probably came from school when we were required to finish our assignments before we can do anything else. But the problem is, everything I was doing in order to make money really drained me of energy. I didn't like my job at the time, so I came home exhausted. And I didn't have any energy or willpower left to tackle any of my side hustles. And to be honest, I didn't quite enjoy doing my side hustles either. And those were also draining me of energy as well. You know, I should have made time to draw and write because doing that would have probably rejuvenated me and energized me and replenished my energy because I enjoyed it so much. Years later, I finally kicked my procrastination habit. It's been years since then, and I can honestly say that I stopped procrastinating. At least the toxic sort of procrastination where I feel guilty and anxious and where I'm beating myself up for not being productive, you know, that sort of thing. I don't do that anymore. Now, if I do procrastinate or delay a task, it's usually because I'm physically not feeling too well or it's for my own inner well being. But I don't judge myself the way I used to when I do delay working on a task. And、um, the biggest thing that brought about this change was 
I stopped doing things that I didn't like. I mean, not completely. Come on, I'm not a psycho. <laughs> um, like as much as possible. That's what I'm saying. I first got rid of my side hustles that I was doing for extra income, and、um, eventually quit my corporate job and got freelance work instead. So slowly, one by one, I gradually replaced the jobs I didn't like with tasks that I liked and jobs I enjoyed. Now listen, I know it's not realistic to only do things you like and completely avoid things you don't like. If everybody did that, the world would not go around. I mean, no one would want to be, for example, sewer pipe cleaners or septic tank repairmen. And then where would that leave us? <laughs> Yeah, it's not a pretty picture. <laughs> But what I am saying is, I essentially stopped filling my days with only things that drained me of energy, which is what I was doing back then. I was only doing things that was related to me making money, which I didn't really enjoy. So it was draining me. Now my day is much more balanced because now I always make time for activities that rejuvenate me. And the thing that took me by surprise is that I realized that I could work longer hours without even noticing that I was working because I felt rejuvenated. I mean, now I'm excited to work and I feel energized, and motivation is easy to come by. So there really is no need for me to procrastinate because why would you want to procrastinate on stuff that you like doing? You know, you want to do it all the time, right? And also, I have to add this. Another decision I made was I got rid of hard deadlines. This did wonders for me. Now, when I'm approaching a task, I say to myself, "It'll get done when it gets done," because if I rush myself, I'm not going to enjoy doing it. You know, I figure I'm not racing against anything, and I just let myself take as much time as I need. In conclusion. The more I think about it, the more I feel that procrastination is a defense mechanism we develop to survive the hustle culture, a concept fueled by our society that is obsessed with constant output, growth, expansion, and productivity. We're trained to feel guilty and ultimately reject resting and being still, so that we'd be constantly contributing to the big machine that is our ever-growing and ever-distending economy. Anyway, if you like this video, you should check out my other video titled "Set Powerful Intentions: How I Do It on a Daily Basis." It's a two-part series on how to use intentions to manifest things. In there, I talk about why I don't set deadlines. So, if you're curious, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Regards, Ray.